A mailman usually delivers about 1,100 letters a day. They come in all shapes and sizes, bills mostly. At least that's what people say. But when you come to think of it, there's probably nothing more important than what you get in your daily mail. Letters about births and deaths, letters filled with happiness, afternoon, or despair, the whole microcosm of life, just for the price of a postage stamp. Did you ever stop to think what it'd be like if there was no mail? Or if letters written never got delivered? Or if urgent messages were delivered too late? Hi there. Pretty scary, huh? Hmm. You better believe it. It could change the lives of everybody concerned. It did, too. One time, when three letters were delivered a year late. Yes, sir. <laughs> Changed the lives of everybody. I think so. I wish I were going with you. Me too. Well, one thing about it, your trips are getting shorter and fewer. Yeah. I think we'd better get moving. We'd better. I told the children to hurry home. Dad! Dad! <laughs> oh, hey, you almost missed Hi, the boat. Dad. Now, say goodbye to your father. He'll miss his plane. Bye-bye, love. So long, Dad. Could you give me one of those little liquor bottles from the plane? Yeah, sure. What kind? The mint stuff. The green kind. I don't have one of those. Gotcha. What do you want, darling? I want a Mexican doll. A doll from Mexico. Yeah. Mom, can I go over to Trisha's? We got a brownie meeting. All right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Hurry home. Get home before dark. Okay. Hey, Mom, I gotta go to Jimmy's. I'll be back later. All right. Bye, Dad. Okay, sir. Oh, don't forget the Pro Bowl tickets. Okay. Come on, you better go. You're gonna miss your plane. Something wrong? You've hardly said a word since we left the house. Oh, I know it's silly, but... Oh, I always hate it when you have to fly. You're right, that is silly. You know, on the way back home, I play the most awful game. What I'd do if anything ever happened to you and you didn't come home. That's kind of depressing. Mm-hmm. is masochistic, don't you know that? No matter how happy we are, no matter how great things are going, there's always that chance that, um, that well, it'll be taken away from us. And that's love? Mm, it'll do. At least for me. Well, take care of yourself. And the kids. Paul. You too. Now watch the food down there. I'll try to phone, but you know we're going to be looking at some land way out in the desert, so don't get worried, huh? 
I'll miss you, darling. I didn't tell her. Anything? I tried, but every time I got close to it, I... I just don't want to hurt her, Laura. I swear, when we get there, I'll write to her. It'll be much easier for her. As a matter of fact, it'll be better for me, too. I'll be able to say things in that letter that I never would have been able to say ordinarily. Been 14 years, it's not easy. It's all any man could ask for. Dear God, I'd give anything if I could keep from hurting you. I want you to know, Elaine, that I'll always take care of you and the kids. I just hope you can explain to them that a divorce is not the end, that sometimes it can be a beginning. stomach is just killing me. Oh, can I do something? No, thank you. How about some antacid? No. Oh, what about some plain soda water? No, no, no. For heaven's sakes, no, Elaine. I... I'm sorry, Laura. Don't be silly. It's nothing. Uh, I'm, I'm really very sorry, Laura. I'll allow you at least three of those a week, all right? All right. Come on, you better hurry. We have a reservation in a half an hour. My stomach is just exploding. It must have been those ramen tequila sours. Darling, could we have dinner in the room? We've been out every night since we got here. It'd be good for both of us. We can't. We, we promised the Hortons, remember? Oh, yes, yes, of course. I completely forgot about them. Laura, I can't. Why don't you go and meet the Hortons? Why don't I just meet them for a quick dinner, and I'll be right back, okay? Okay. Is that all right with you? Yeah. Are you sure? Are you sure you don't no, want me to No, 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 really. Give me a chance to finish my letter. All right. I'll be back before you miss me. All right. Have a good time. I will, but I'll miss you. Now, take care. Bye-bye.
you find somewhere else to play? You've got the whole beach. ER, son. They shouldn't let kids in this hotel. You can't relax for a minute. Oh, Laura, they're just playing. They should find somewhere else to play. Come on. Let's go back to the room. Paul. Well, why are you acting like I'm some kind of ogre or something? It wasn't intentional, but just a couple of boys. Well, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm, I'm talking about the way you're acting, your attitude. I thought we were talking about your attitude. Just because I lose my temper once, that means I hate all kids. Or I didn't say that you hated kids. Well, I don't. I mean, I love them. And after a while, after we're married for a while, I want to have your children. Maybe that's what we're talking about here, really. What do you mean? I already have my children. I want you to stay. Your ticket's in here, hotel bill is paid, and there's money in the envelope. Is that what you think I want? Your money? That's not what I meant, Laura, and you know it. Why run away? Let's talk about it. Maybe we can find some answers. trying to do what's right for both of us. Uh, you don't believe that, but I am. Now, we could go on this way for days, weeks, maybe even years. But it would always end this way. Why? Because... I'm part of a family. And, and, and whatever it is that a family is, well, I think that's important. I'm too old and too tired to start a new one. It, it, it wouldn't be fair to you. Tell me the truth. You never intended to write that letter, did you? That's not true. Stamped and sealed. I just couldn't mail it. You're going back to Elaine because you feel safe there. Is that enough to feel safe? I, I don't really know. that we could make it. Maybe. I'm sorry. I'm very sorry.
Would you like a drink, sir? Sir, would you like a drink? Oh, uh, yeah, scotch and soda, please. No, that green stuff. <laughs> uh, creme de menthe, please. Yes, sir. So, letter number one was on its way. In quite different surroundings, a love affair would lead to the second letter. You were wonderful. Don't. Please don't. No, I, I mean it. You were. You were brilliant. And how many of them were here? Or even gave a damn? Well, I, for one, very much gave a damn. Well, that's it. Tomorrow night is my last recital, the last one I give. You can't mean that. You can't walk out on, on a talent, on a God-given gift. The only thing that God ever gave me is enough talent to taste what success might be like. And that for 20 years, that's all I've done is taste it and smell it. Coming from somebody else's kitchen. I can't make it. Not if you don't believe you can. You're good, Derek. Better than most. All you need is a chance. A well-financed, well-planned concert tour. And you'll get it. I know you will. I'm sorry, Ben. We are talking about me. Why don't we change the subject? <laughs> to what? <laughs> Something more important than all of this. To us. I want to marry you. What, don't you want to? Derek. Oh, yes, I want to. Oh. But we, we have to talk. There's so many things I have to tell you. Well, we can talk whenever you like. Tomorrow? At my house?
Aren't you glad to see me? I wasn't expecting you till sometime next month. I know. I called last night to tell you I was coming back, but you weren't in. I was in. Yes, Michael told me about your Mr. Childs. I must say, he's much better looking than all the others. He's much more than that. Oh, I'm sure he is, but let me find out for myself. I love surprises. Geraldine, don't spoil it for me. Not this time. Please. Did you tell him yet? Oh, you didn't, did you? No, not yet, but I will, and it won't make any difference. Well, I'm sure if he's all you think he is, he, he should be a unique experience in your life. Tell him, Penny, or I will. And you know how much pleasure that will give me. <laughs> Michael, bring the drinks over here, please. My sister, Geraldine, Derek Childs. Hi. Has Penny introduced you to the Parkington family drink yet, Eric? Not yet. It's Derek. Oh, I'm sorry. I like Eric much better. I had a puppy dog once named Eric. Go on, taste it. It's the first of a two-part test you'll have to pass in order to even be considered a likely candidate. For, for what office? The keeper of the Parkington treasure key. Job does offer great possibilities, doesn't it, Eric? Future sister-in-law, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think you and I are going to get along. Oh, but we'll have to. Unless, of course, you're everything that Penny says you are and that you... Haven't any interest in money at all. He's Geraldine. Oh, dear. I've been through this so many times with Penny's friends. It's, um, it's difficult to find a fresh approach. Why don't you tell us straight out? That would be a fresh approach for you. All right, straight up. Penny doesn't have any money of her own except for a 10,000 yearly allowance. I control the entire Parkington fortune. You see, my father had two very different gifts to give his daughters. Money and love. But the trouble was that, well, he, he never gave both to one person. It was either one or the other. And Penny got his love. Which you've tried to steal from me for as long as I can remember. <laughs> Penny, darling, I don't have to steal anything. I can buy whatever I want. Eric? It's, uh, <clears throat> it's getting late. I better go get dressed for the recital. You haven't tasted your drink. It's very good. Isn't it?
Bravo. Bravo. Eric, I thought I bought out the house for tonight's performance. What else did you buy, Geraldine? Penelope. I'll go backstage and change. I'll be right out. You can't have him, Geraldine. I won't let you. I'm going to marry him. Oh, don't be childish, Penny. If I want him, and mind you, I do find him rather interesting, much more of a man than you could ever handle. If I want him, I will take him. You should have done! Next time, I'll let you die. There won't be a next time. I'm having too much fun to even think of suicide. Oh, there'll be another time. And I'm just gonna watch. And I'm not gonna lift a finger to stop you. Oh, poor, dear, sweet Penelope. The soft and tender child that Daddy loves so much. If you did let me die, you would have had it all by now. But you couldn't. You were too soft and tender, disgustingly giving. That's why Daddy left me all the money. If he left it to you, you, you'd give it away like so much ice cream to a lot of hungry children. He knew that without it, you were nothing. Even with it, you don't come up to much. Enough to take what you want. Now, Penny, Derek is mine. I'm going to take him. He loves me! Me! He loves one thing. Those whom God hath joined together, let no man put asunder. For as much as these two people have consented together in holy wedlock, and have witnessed the same before God and this company, and thereto have given and pledged their troth, each to the other, and have declared the same by giving and receiving a ring and by joining hands, I pronounce that they are man and wife. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Is island forever and ever. Just the two of us. Well, it's been three months. What happens when you run out of islands? I'll buy another island. <laughs> Anything you want. I'll, I'll build you another island. That's what I'll do. What I want. Just what you promised me. Nothing else. That too. The best concert tour money can buy. Good. When? When I decide it's time. <laughs> Boat's ready. You set? All set. <laughs> darling, oh, darling, you are wonderful. Uh, After what happened yesterday, well, you're just wonderful. You know, you probably did me a favor. Truth is, I'm really afraid. When I think about it, maybe it's better if I don't find out whether I could have made it or not. Come on, we got enough liquor out there to make Parkinson's. We'll fill the ocean with them. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Oh, that's All right. my letter. All right? Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> no more for me. Come on, come on now. Oh. You're slowing down. <coughs> oh, I, I don't know what, whether it's drinking these things on the ocean. <laughs> I'm drinking these things on water, but they sure seem a lot stronger than me. <laughs> Here you are. Come on now, finish that. No. Come on. No, I can't. Come on. That's a good girl. Finish it up. All the way. That's a girl. Now, you can finish no, one more. No, no, no. One more. more. Come on. No. Come on. Come on. That's it. Oh. I knew you could do it. If you're going to be a sailor, you got to know how to drink, you know. Oh. Sailors drink rum and all that. Uh, Fifteen oh. men on a net mansion. Hey, Jerry. Yeah. 
Geraldi. Geraldi. Hey, Geraldine. Come on. The second letter was on its way. Meanwhile, in a small town in Northern California, events were leading up to the third letter. What did you tell your mother? I told her it was a party for Melanie. Could you get all the groceries? Yeah, everything you put on the list. $11.42 to be exact. Thanks. I'll do the same for you one day. Huh. It'll never happen. Got a mother who doesn't give a damn and a boyfriend not worth doing it for. <laughs> Joe? Yeah? When are you going to marry me? After we eat? If it'd help any, I'd fill your stomach until you burst. Marry me, Joey, and I'll make you the fattest man in the world. Oh, come on, Karen. <laughs> Drop it, would you? We go through the same bit every time. Well, just say you don't want to. That's all it'll take. And I'll never bring the subject up again. I don't want to. Why? I thought you said you were never going to bring it up again. I'm a liar. So what? I lied to my mother about where I'm going. Maybe I'm lying to myself about the same thing. Where am I going, Joe? Home, if you keep it up. And home if I don't in a couple of hours. For over three months, I've been playing this game with you and my mother, and I, I can't take it anymore. I want to belong somewhere, Joe. What do you want from me, Karen? I'm sorry, I can't give you that. Well, then you can't give me anything. All right, we'll talk about it. With my mother? <laughs> Joe. Now ask me like I never brought up the subject. Ask me, please. I love you, Karen. Ask. Marry me? Now you can eat. Joe, when are you going to marry me? 
When are you going to marry me? When are you going to marry me? You guys seen uh, Mr. Hastings? He told me to meet him here. Yeah, you Joe Randolph? Yeah, that's right. Well, Hastings told me to tell you it's all off. He's got another driver and you looking at him. I think I'll wait and hear it from him. Well, ain't no need to. You got the best man around. Unless you think you want to prove otherwise. <laughs> no, no. Forget it, man. I got nothing to prove. You're proving something just by standing there with your guts hanging out yellow. <laughs> What's Hastings gonna think when he hears you backed out? Ain't gonna have much confidence. Word gets around here pretty fast, and before you know it, the whole county finds out. Ain't no track gonna want you. Yes, sir. The only way you're gonna race around here, boys, is if you can take me. <laughs> you got that? They know all of us. And what do you think they're going to do when we bring you in for murdering Sonny? Find out, Mr. Hang on just a minute. Yeah. Hey, Joe. Yeah? Is Mrs. Forrester's car ready yet? Yeah, yeah, it's all set. It's out back. She wants you to bring it over to the club. Hey, I'm on my way. Keys, Mrs. Forrester. Thank you. You're welcome. Now, do you suppose if we could talk, ma'am? No, not we. I'll talk. I think you should listen. Joe. Please sit down, will you? I wanted to talk to you, Mrs. Forrester, because I thought that maybe we could work something out between us so that Karen could have it a little easier. Leave her alone, will you please, Joe? It could never work out, and you know it. I love Karen. Now, that's what's really important, isn't it? That's what frightens me. Well, then you're just going to have to keep running scared, Mrs. Forrester. Karen and me are getting married. 
No, you're not, Joe. If you try, you go to jail where you belong. It only took a week and one private detective to find out about you. Oh, you're something. You're really something else, you know that lady? I'm a mother, Joe. That's all. A mother who doesn't want to see her daughter drown. Please believe me, I don't want to hurt you. But if I have to, I'll bury you. Now, Joe, I want you out of town by tonight. And if you don't go, I'll call the sheriff's office and they'll take you out. Back across the state line. Where they want you for the killing of that boy. That was an accident, Mrs. Forrester. Of course, I don't expect you to believe that. Any more than you believe that I love Karen or that she's the only good thing that's ever happened to me in my entire life. Joe, give her a chance to live. Give her a chance to find some happiness. You can't give her anything but misery. Heartbreak. Joe. Leave town today. Don't try to see her again. Don't ever talk to her. Or I swear it, if I have to, I'll keep you apart with prison bars. I know he wouldn't leave me like that, not like that. Darling, I've been telling you what happened, not what you want to hear. Mother, please, I'm not asking you to pass me the toast or what dress to wear. I'm asking you to help straighten out my life. What is it you want me to say, Karen? Just the truth. Well, I've told you. He delivered the car at the club. Then he asked me to tell you that it was more than he could handle. And he was sorry he'd let things go this far. But he knew he was doing the best thing for you. And then he left. And that's all? Not that he'd write or he'd call sometimes? Listen, I don't need to talk to her. I just want to know how she is. Joe, you know, I've, I've told you and I've warned you. Now, if you call again, I'm going to the police.
What's the matter? You look all shook up. Oh, nothing, dear. Just a little headache. Yeah. Then maybe I better wait to talk to you. About what? If I tell you about what, there's no point in waiting, is there? Now, Karen, if you want to talk to me, I want to listen. But if we're just going to have anger and bitterness, then you're right. I'll wait. Mother, that day that Joe came to see you at the club, if he told you that he loved me and wanted to marry me, what would you have said to him? No, not again. I'm not going through this with you one more time. Mother, please, just once more. It's important. All right. I would have tried to talk him out of it, told him he wasn't ready to get married, and neither were you. Yes, I was. I'm pregnant. How far along? Three months. Now, listen, Karen, maybe Mother, we Mother, can... I am going to keep this baby, so don't try and talk me out of it. I'll leave here if I have to. But I'm keeping Joe's baby. For a man you're never going to see again? Joe is coming back. And when he does, I'll be here waiting for him with his baby. He's not coming back, Karen. Now, you've got to take my word for it. Joe loves me. Oh, no, Jane, I, I'm sorry. I, I'm, I'm not coming to the club today. I'll call you later. Right, goodbye. Hi, Joe. How's work? Oh, you know, the same. Okay. Want me to order you some supper? No, 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 thank you. Got me a letter to write. Dear Mrs. Forrester, I'm writing to you because I know that you'd never let Karen get my letter. You were right in what you said back there about me and Karen. I couldn't have given her anything but a bad time. Not because I didn't love her enough, because I did, and I still do. No, it wasn't that. The trouble was I didn't like myself enough. I felt that giving her me was like giving her nothing, and she deserves much more than that. So tomorrow morning I'm going back because I didn't kill that fellow and I'm going to prove it. And if it turns out for me, and it's got to, then I'm coming back for Karen. Ready for your supper now, Joe? Yes, ma'am. Just as soon as I mail this letter. And Mrs. White, you better make it the biggest T-bone you got, because I am hungry. The crazy fool. He ran out of nowhere. I didn't even see him until it was too late. Stand back, everybody. Stand back. Please, ma'am, give him room. Anyone know this kid? He's dead. Everyone stand clear. I'll call a coroner.
Operator, I'd like to make a long distance call to Oxnard, California. Yes. No, I don't know the number, but the name of the party is Forrester. Uh, I see. Yes. Yes, we did know the boy. Thank you. Thank you so much for calling me. Goodbye. Boy, have I got the flaws. Listen to me, dear. Joe. What about Joe? I... I had a call. He, he, he's been killed in a car accident somewhere in Arizona. were mailed. They all came here to Central Processing. Stopped here. We don't often lose mail, but here's where these letters stayed for almost a year. time, they finally came to me to be delivered. Here, let me help you. No, that's all right. You get the door. I'll handle this. Terrible ribbing down at the office. Taking off time to go grocery shopping. <laughs> no, no, no. I just tell them that I've got a wife who can't see over her own stomach and trips over the lawn sprinklers. Thank you. I needed that.
Yes? Uh, Mrs. Paul Anderson, please. Well, she's busy at the moment. May I help? I'm Mr. Anderson. Oh, well, I have a special delivery letter for her. It was mailed over a year ago. Uh, unfortunately, a carrier was lost. Plane crash. And uh, we just recovered it. I've been authorized to deliver it along with the Postal Service's apologies for the delay. Uh, that letter, sir, where was it mailed from? All right, it's uh, postmark Guamish. <laughs> oh, well, you see, uh, thank you. I wrote it a year ago while I was off on a business trip. Oh. Where do I sign for it? Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson. Because of the special circumstances, I have to deliver this personally to the party it's addressed to. May I see Mrs. Anderson? Oh, sir, that letter never should have been mailed. Delivering it now will only hurt my wife. Please. I'm sorry, Mr. Anderson. There's really nothing I can do about it. It has to be delivered. You don't understand. I wrote it a year ago. It will ruin everything. I'm truly sorry. This gentleman has got something for you. Now, this letter was mailed to you a year ago. A carrier plane crashed and a bag of mail from it was just found. If you'll uh, sign here, please. Oh, yes. Thank you. We're sorry about the delay. Very sorry. Stuart, they say about the post office. <laughs> Either rain, snow, heat, or, or gloom of night could... Elaine. I can't complain that you didn't write me while you were in Mexico. Why did you do that? Who wants to read a letter that's a year old? Probably a travelogue anyway. You never were a very good letter writer. I'll bet you one thing. <laughs> What's that, darling? I'll never write another one. Telephone, Mr. Childs. Your manager is on the line. All right, I'm in. Uh, Phil? No. No, that is not good enough. I've already played uh, Carnegie Hall. Look, uh, Phil, I, I don't want to argue about it. Either arrange that a, a European tour or I'll get somebody else. And start with London. Miss Parkington no longer lives here. Oh. Well, do you, uh, do you have a forwarding address for her? Yes, I'll write it down for you. 
Okay. We're sorry about the foul up in delivering this. Hope it didn't spoil anything. Uh, would you sign here, please? Thanks, Miss Parkington. Dearest Penelope, just a short note to let you know how happy I've been these past three months. It's hard to believe it's me, but I'm in love. Yes, with your Derek. I owe you so much, Penny. There's so much to repay. Now, that's a lovely testimonial to a charitable and fine woman, but what is the point to all of this, Penelope? I'm a very busy man. The postmark on this letter is the same day that Geraldine died. <laughs> Right. What's that supposed to prove? I think back to the three attempts I made on my life, and I thank God I was never successful. What a beautiful life it is, Penny, and what a terrible waste it would have been. Does that sound like a woman about to commit suicide? Well, does it, Derek? Now, listen. I told the police what happened. I, uh, I was up, up in the deck, and uh, she was below filling us up with those drinks, and... When I came down, she'd already done it. Now, what motive could I have, Penelope? I had everything. She would have given me the world if I'd asked for it. Except what you really wanted. Derry keeps bringing up the concert tour I promised him. But I can't go through with it. Sometimes I feel the hatred so strong in his eyes, I think he might even kill me, and I'm frightened. But then he smiles, and it's all wonderful again. Penelope, that is nothing. It's not hard proof. It's nothing. I wonder if a second inquest would feel the same way as you do. The first time it was touch and go. Do you remember, Derek? For a while there, I thought you weren't going to make it. Oh, fair enough. Why don't we let them read Geraldine's letter and decide for themselves? It's just a copy, Derek. The original is in my lawyer's safe, along with a letter from me stating that should I die suddenly, you might be considered a prime suspect. Penelope. Please. Don't, uh, don't go to the police, please. The police? Oh, no, Derek, no. No, I'm not going to go to the police. I, I've waited much too long, and I have too much to make up for to let them have you. There are two things that I want from you, Derek. The first, and there'll be no further discussion about this, no more music for you. You can't afford it. And second, bring my suitcases up to our bedroom, Eric, darling. What's wrong with her? I don't know what's wrong with her. Karen! 
She is your baby. Don't you want to take care of her? No, Mother, I can't. Not right now. It's been happening, just like you said. Every time I look at her, all kinds of questions go through my mind. Why did he leave me? Did he love me, Mother? Did he really love me? I could live with that. I could live with her just knowing he did. But not like this. I have an airmail letter for Mrs. Forrester. Oh, I'm Mrs. Forrester. Uh, this letter's been delayed a while. Over a year, as a matter of fact. I think I better explain. And she deserves much more than that. So tomorrow morning, I'm going back, Mrs. Forrester. Back to where my life became dirt. Because I didn't kill that fellow, and I'm going to prove it. And if it turns out for me, then it's got to. Then I'm coming back for Karen. just recovered it. Darling, I'm sorry. You were right in what you said back there about me and Karen. Not because I didn't love her enough. Because I did. And I still do. And if it turns out for me, and it's got to, then I'm coming back for Karen. Letter, but you didn't. You didn't, and I love you for it. I know what it took for you to give me that letter. But you didn't just give me a letter. You gave me Joe back. You gave me my daughter back. I love you, Mama. Oh.
Yes, sir. You never know what's in a letter, do you? Good news, bad news, you just never know. Well, we'll see that you get your mail, okay? May take us a little time, but sooner or later, you'll get your letter. Mm -hmm.